I was the CTO at a visual effects company here in China. And that's one of the visual effects companies that did some work for The Wandering Earth. Of course, I'm not an artist. I don't work on the movies directly. What I do is I do management and also do technical build outs and support for production to make the films. So there's an entire department of the talent, the artists, is a very big uh, department. And then I'm in one of the departments that supports them. So that's very clear in your video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I, all I've ever said is, of course, that I'm, uh, you know, I worked at a company that worked on the movie. I didn't, you know, I, I'm not trying to imply that I made the movie myself or anything. Uh, there's, you know, movies are thousands and thousands of people that, that, that do it. And the people who uh, deserve the credit for the visual effects of the movie are obviously the artists and the supervisors of the artists. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of crazy. There's a lot of uh, a lot of comments, a lot of sharing, a lot of um, a lot of likes, a lot of new fans. Um, but I think the most important thing is there's a lot of good attention on The Wandering Earth, which is a great movie, really wonderful visual effects and high production value, and just getting even more attention, you know, uh, day after day. So I think overall it's very positive. Well, I think that uh, it's definitely an interesting experience because you can go from a situation where you say something that's true and then someone else maybe misunderstand it, someone else maybe misunderstand that, and then uh, before you know it, what you said has changed to something totally different even though you never said that. So that's something interesting. Um, as far as personally, I don't really think that I'm becoming famous. I just think that if you put yourself out there and you say something publicly, you say your opinions, you say what you feel about something, a lot of people are going to agree, a lot of people are not going to agree. Um, and so usually what, and then they just say, I don't want to do that anymore. But for me, um, I'm comfortable doing it. I'm okay if people don't like what I'm saying or if they do like it. You know, I just feel like I need to just say what I need to say. Yeah, uh, I've had a couple of Chinese names over the years. I can't remember them, but I didn't really like any of them. They're given? Yeah, given to me. And um, it's very hard to choose a good Chinese name if you're a foreigner, because it's very hard to understand how it sounds to a real Chinese person. Um, so when I was working, uh, uh, as a CTO at, in the visual effects industry, um, my crew, all the IT team and the, the programmers, they came up with this name for me called Da Wang. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I even still have an old business card of mine that said Nathan Rich Da Wang, and then it said my position. And so they used to call me Da Wang, and of course I love hot pot. And so over time it just became Hu Guo Da Wang. It makes sense why they would call me that, yes. Because the way that, you know, the way that we worked there is that uh, after a while I had my own office away from IT and the programmers and everything because I had to do more management stuff. And then I would come, I would go to the IT office and see what everyone is doing. Yeah. And then I would go to the programmers, see what they're all doing, and then go back. So they probably feel like I'm coming down <laughs> to, to check on what they're doing. So that makes a lot of sense, yes. yeah. But it's so your name now. It's my name now. It's just who I am, you know. And, you know, uh, that's, it's interesting because the way that I manage people is very different than I am in my home life. You know, I'm, personally, myself, I'm a very relaxed guy. You know, I'm super easygoing, California dude, don't care, let's go hang out. But at work, it's like, I don't want to have fun, I don't want to play on my phone, I don't want to play games, I want to get the work done totally focused on work and so I always want my crew, my teams to also have that same, um, you know, culture and so I could see why they maybe think that I'm kind of like a hawk or like a da wang. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a CTO of a visual effects company for a while and I've been doing technical work for over a decade, 
very long time. Um, originally that started because somebody just told me, you should do computers. It wasn't really my native passion. Um, and so I kind of felt like I had done enough computers and I had, um, I had a lot of money saved up. I had a career done. So I just felt like it was time to take a break, honestly. And um, I didn't have any sort of plan to be somebody on the internet. I just didn't want to work anymore, to be honest with you. I wanted to take a break, figure out what to do next, finish my book, um, maybe learn some Chinese. I was thinking about uh, transferring to a school visa, learn some, some, some Chinese. And then when the DG uh, video came out talking about, you know, this upcoming event and they said some things about China and they showed China in a way that I didn't really agree with. So then we made a video and people um, enjoyed it. And so we s just slowly started to think about maybe we can make some videos uh, that people might want to see. Bravissimo. I didn't quit to go do stuff on the internet. I quit because I didn't want to work anymore and I wanted to, you know, um, figure out what else to do. Yeah. And then, you know, today I actually, I don't just do videos. I'm still a CTO just at another company, at an architecture company. So, um, you know, this is something that I do. It doesn't make me any money. It costs more than it than it makes right now, because I spend all my waking time doing it and um, and everything. So it's a hobby. It's something I I, I, I want to do. I want to put my voice out there, and I want to interact with the people in China and in the world who are interested in China, and um, and and compare ideas. And when I make a video, what I'm really looking for is the comment replies. And I want other people to make videos. What do they think about what I said? Right? What's their idea? I want to see what they, they want to say. So to me, it's kind of like a marketplace of ideas that I just like to participate in. I read, uh, I read reviews. I read comments. I read the, any flying comments or pretty much anybody's reaction to my video, I will, I will pay attention to. I, I, I'm okay if it's negative, I'm okay if it's positive, neutral. You know, obviously I don't like if somebody just comes on to say something negative and they don't, they're not interested in the actual video, but um, you know, I'm totally open to discuss with people about disagreements or um, you know, whatever. But the, oh, by far the vast majority of all the people who see the videos have positive things to say. So I'm happy for that. If I were forced to leave China, then I would leave China. If that doesn't happen, I will never leave China. And I made that decision uh, a couple years ago. Um, while I was working here, I mean, before I moved here, I knew that I was going to be here for a long time. And then when I was living here, I was realizing, yeah, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be like. And I decided I would never leave. A lot of people ask me that when I go back to America. Are you going to leave uh, uh, China anytime soon? You coming back? And I always feel strange like, oh, you should come to China. <laughs> That's where I live. This is my home. Yeah. But you know, the thing is I, I do, uh, I do always love, uh, uh, love America and America has a, amazing qualities, a lot of good stuff about it. Uh, so I don't want anyone to think that I don't like America because I love yeah. America. But I also love China. And for me, this is where I want to live, you know, and I, I can't see that changing. What's the difference of the two lives? Which lives? American life, China? American and life, China. Uh, well, life in America for me is, uh, you know, it, it's similar. There's more opportunity because um, there's a lot more visual effects companies, a lot more, like 10 times, a hundred times as many. So because I live in LA, uh, that's just very easy for me to get a, a job at any of these companies. Um, so that part's better. Um, but you know, it's also a bit more dangerous in, in America, a lot more driving. So there's, there's pluses and minuses, you know, there's great people in both countries. So I enjoy both. But for me, 
This is a, just such a more rich cultural experience that if you take the time to appreciate it, then you will have a wonderful time. And if you just come by it and you think that you know everything about the world and that you're better than China, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you take the time to understand that this country has been here 10 times as long as America, so maybe you should listen to what they're saying and respect them and take your time, it's, uh, it's just an amazing, um, amazing country with really beautiful places and, and, and people. So um, it's, it's a good life in both places for me, um, but I prefer China. So um, being in a cult as a young person um, was pretty tough. And my family was very, very devout. They were very strongly believed in it. So it was a, a little bit worse for me even than some other people that I know. Um, so I haven't done anything with that cult since I was 17. It was many, 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 many years ago. So I've been away from it for a very long time. And I've had a lot of time to think about what I actually believe in in life. And almost nothing that I believe in has anything to do with them anymore, which is good. But there are still some echoes of the, what they told me so long ago that happened in my mind. It's some, maybe some permanent damage, which I'm not happy about. And the way things went with my family was very painful, especially with my mother. Um, and so if I'm being totally honest with you, when I watch my own video, me, I just watch myself telling my own story. It's very hard for me not to cry. I will need to yeah. skip past certain parts of it. It's just too emotional for me. So that is still with me. But day to day, normal day, walking around, getting a drink, hanging out, you know, get some coffee, go eat some lunch. I'm generally an okay person. So I'm, I'm a relatively happy person. I'm not that affected by the past, but it definitely, you know, helped shape who I am. So you make yourself by yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I had to, you know, that's one of the interesting things that happened to me. I say interesting, but it was also very hard. When you realize as a kid that everything that you know is wrong and your family doesn't want you and you are alone and you aren't even yourself anymore, then exactly what you said, who are you? You have to now build yourself into a human. It's like you have to start over and build a new human up. And um, it was a lot of work and a lot of, uh, a lot of time. And it was very difficult, but you know, I, everything, I think everything happens for some kind of reason. And I don't know what that reason is, but, but uh, if that's true, then, you know, we have no choice but to be who we are.